Okay, just be careful. We just went to the central part. The shellings are crazy there. They shoot everywhere here. Okay, we'll be in touch. The equator of winter and we are now in the hottest spot on the planet. This is the Bakhmut agglomeration, where the fiercest historical battles for Donbass are taking place. It's winter outside, but here it's so hot, so loud, so scary that it's hard to put it into words. And it is better not to stay in one spot, but to move constantly, because you can hear what is happening here. Whether he survives or not, you must help him, because you are a humanitarian mission. It is my opinion. And who has what views? I haven't asked that for a long time. Why don't they leave? I know 80% of the people there now are normal and adequate. I mean they are not waiting for Russians. Because everyone already sees what is happening, that Russia is bombing them and that Russia deprives them of their freedom, housing, life. I'm sorry. Hello. Well, we are almost in Bakhmut. There, to the right side, is the front line. The front is also here. The road here is shot through. I go every day, whether there is shelling or not. I have to go, because I need to do something for the points of invincibility or solve some other humanitarian problems. When I approach Bakhmut, I listen. If one district is shelled, it means that they will not reach another. Oh, this is a missile strike. Here is Bakhmut. Bakhmut, the hottest destination in the world. So we are together with our acquaintances and friends from the volunteer house, who are actively working in the hottest points of the front, including Bakhmut and Soldar. We are now going around the yards, watching how they work, distributing the humanitarian packages from Kiev to basements and bomb shelters. As we have already heard, the local population here is approximately 8,000 people. Everyone lives in basements in this sub-zero weather. Why people live like that in the 21st century? Pay attention to how the toilet is made on the street. People live in the basement. They have to use toilet and they made such a toilet. It's very cold, very scary. You hear explosions all the time, the whole city is buzzing. No surviving buildings, two-story buildings, garages, private buildings, factories near the railroad track. There was a school or an enterprise here everything was destroyed, the city was erased. Such was Dresden or Stalingrad at one time, during the Second World War. It flew to the corner, here is the hole. And then there was a second hit, this is where it collapsed. No one died, no. When there was the first missile strike, one man was wounded in the heel. He stands there. There was a thud and a splinter caught his leg through his shoe. Those districts where the fighting is taking place now. 
It's literally two kilometers from here. One kilometer. One kilometer to the shooting combats? Yes. It's tough. Wait, I'll go through. I'll pass sideways, I can't go. Yura carries. Do you have water? What? Do you have water? We collect water from the stream and volunteers bring it to us. Today they say there is 15 centimeters of ice. We chop it with an axe. How many people left here in the basement? About 25. Do you have a rotation schedule? Is someone responsible for the water today? No, only for heating the stove. They take turns for three hours and then others change them. We are sawing firewood. Nobody bring us firewood. We even have showers. Look what a shower. And the fermented cabbage. You have made yourself an apartment here. You also have a dog living with you. Of course. Zhukov. We moved to the basement in May. May 17th, when it flew here for the first time. The first two-story building, the second two-story building, then people began to gather here. The boys will come today and bring you the stove. Bring them the stove. Yes, with firewood, with everything. You may see the forest where the pig dogs are there. Russians. They are right there, in the forest. And if you look across the river, they also have their positions there. Assess the intensity of hostilities. Very loud. Not even every second, but several explosions per second. Yes, an automatic fire. You can't hear them now because the generator is working here. But there is an automatic fire every minute. Carefully. It's out there somewhere, the machine gun, they may attack from there, if we hear machine guns from up there. See how cold it is in the city, that the walls are covered with ice and snow. I imagine what's in the pipes in the apartments. There is a white bus standing there. Over there? Go there, they give humanitarian aid there. Go get humanitarian aid. How much is there? Go get it. Two boxes? Yes. People arrive from all over the city, because there is no happiness at all. The soldiers gave us humanitarian aid today. It's good that we have men and they chop the firewood. We are already under 70 years old, it is difficult. Do you often get help? We only hope for you. Do the remaining civilians live at the expense of volunteers? Yes, mostly. If not the volunteers, you wouldn't have any food or anything. There is a small bazaar, but firstly, there are few goods there, and secondly, we don't have money. There is no income. Except that pensioners have a pension. Is the pension brought here in cash? No, only if the sellers transfer to cash, and if not, then I don't even know what to answer you. Thank you. Please. Good day. Again, I got into the lens. I'm lucky. And so everyone got there. One man ran and took a cue for the whole house. 
Tell me, do you have water? Will you dance for dad on camera? There is nothing tastier than Ukrainian food. Tin stew meat. All our Ukrainian food is very tasty. Is the food that the Poles convey worse? Yes, we're just not used to this kind of food, you know. And we can't read Polish. Volunteers brought you such a Christmas tree. Yes. They can be planted. It should be planted in winter. We planted trees here. Is this an installation or what? Yes, it's beautiful here. Do you have a place where you wash your clothes? Or you walk like this, and when it's dirty, you throw it away? No, we do not throw away. We put it there. Luda does laundry. From the pipes, when water was drained from the system in the basement, the head was washed with this water when there was no frost. And when the centralized water supply and electricity disappeared? In August. There is no water or electricity for four months, five months already. Today it has warmed up. And before that, it was minus 18 to 19 degrees of frost. It was minus 22. And you were in the basement all the time. Yes. What was the temperature there? The highest was plus 12. It was in the basement, and it was zero in the room. Terrible, the water freeze. Is the heating all broken? Yes. Here, the projectile hit our house. The apartment caught fire. And here is a broken balcony. It was hardly a mine. Do you see? Two or three times, the balcony and the apartment were on fire. How many residents remained in the building? I can't say that many. How many? 10 to 12, probably 25 or 30. Many. Because 25 people is a lot. There are no windows. Even with windows it is minus 5 degrees in the kitchen. Do you hear this thunder 5 months? In the evening it is even stronger. We wait. We expect that everything will be fine. We believe in God, we pray. We read Psalm 90, 91. In the morning, I got up, read and then go. Our Father prayer at the first place. And we live with hope. There are people who are aggressive, but this is very rare. Usually you see that they are grateful from the bottom of their hearts. It happens that they say, we won't let you in, they get nervous. And when you get to know them, people open their hearts, and you understand that people are in trouble and need to be helped. Especially when the children are small. Got the boxes? Yes. Fine. What did you have where? Foxtrot. And here look to the left, this is the border where the front is. Is it already on the hill? Yes. The private sector and behind it is already the battlefield. This is such a dangerous location. Here, literally in a kilometer or 800 meters from us, hostilities are taking place. It is very hot, despite the sub-zero temperature. A serious strike, somewhere nearby, in the neighboring yard. It is necessary to fall. I did it wrong that I sat down at that moment. Before the war, more than 100,000 people lived in the city together with displaced persons who fled from Donetsk. There were about 120,000 people. Today, according to the mayor's official data, there are a little more than 8,000 people living in basements, without electricity, without water supply, without anything. And their entire existence is in the hands of volunteers who bring them absolutely everything, food, water, candles, hygiene products, we can talk endlessly about the importance of volunteer work. The most amazing people are here. There are people from Japan who work. We met people from Norway yesterday. There are minor boy volunteers from Valen and Helichina. People are here not for money. They do not receive a salary. They go here, risking their lives and health to help those locals who have stayed here. It's the same way to help our military, and their work is extremely difficult. You feel all the time cannonade. Near us are strikes. You can see the condition of the car. They were just driving and a fragment hit the wheel and the wheel changed immediately on the move. That is, there is such a movement as a dynamic movie. Raise your leg. What is your problem? The heel of the shoe is behind. Have they cracked? What is your size? 41st. Go, now I'll give you. Let's put tape for now and we'll repair it later.
This whole war is very tough, but sometimes it looks like the movie Mad Max or computer games, you can drive around an empty and destroyed city in a pickup truck or with the doors open and watch tanks and other military pass by. And shells fly over you, mines and everything explodes. This is surrealism. There's a kind of laughter here, not because it's funny, but laughter when you get a rush of adrenaline and everything else together, and it is such a mixture that causes crazy emotions. What emotions can be experienced after all of this? The only thing I can say is that we travel to many cities and Bakhmut definitely comes out on the first place in terms of destruction in the negative rating. Here, in fact, it is difficult to translate into percentages what part of the city has been erased. It's just messed up. Of course, we will not focus our attention on communication with the military, because many people are filming this, first of all Hromatske, they are now leaving for the hottest spots, they are with the military, on the front lines, film our military at work, we will focus on how the city lives. Hushchi once promised that we would go to Donbass and here we are in Donbass, however, not in disappearing villages, but in in a disappearing city that simply disappears from the face of the earth and we will try to reproduce a little to show the crazy and scary modern vibe of the city The streets of Bakhmut are almost completely empty, the local population, if any, lives in basements, entire buildings here can be counted on the fingers, the city is preparing for street battles, at every intersection there are serious strongholds, serious fortifications, our military had to withdraw from Solidar, but here on the outskirts of Bakhmut, heroic battles for the defense of this fortress city continue. It sounds pathos, but the city was turned into a fortress. Bakhmut and, at one time, Solidar became famous. And they began to develop and became famous due to salt production, because there are very large deposits of salt here in the vicinity of the city. And at one time in the Russian Empire, it accounted for 75% of salt reserves. Every year, about 10,000 workers from different parts of the Russian Empire came to this mines in this province to earn money, because salt was worth a lot of money at that time. And in the 16th to 18th centuries, there was a salt fever similar to the gold fever in California. In the same way, the famous Ukrainian Chumax, who exported salt from here to the territory of all Ukraine, except for the Crimea, all salt was transported from here. Places where people still live are easy to find by such chimneys, which are raised up from the basements. This means that people in the basement made themselves a stove, brought out a pipe, and secured it with earth. Locals who are now staying in the city are hiding here from shelling. And they impress with their mood. I used to go here and thought that people would have a pro-Russian views as some accused them of this, but we just went down to three to four basements, talked with people and surprisingly, all people have very pro-Ukrainian sentiments. People so deliberately defend the Ukrainian position. They expect and believe in our victory. Bakhmut City Leisure Center named after Yevon Martinov. Were you a director in this theater? Yes. Wow, you are such a creative person and you stayed here in the city. Should I not ask you about the reason? Is it something personal? I will not leave my people. And where do you have to live now? Home. Do you live in an apartment or in a basement? In the apartment. Are you deliberately not going down? No. Do you lack fear? Atrophied? Yes. Already atrophied. You know, we go and communicate with local residents and this is a compliment to you. You are a creative person or intelligent. You look quite neat and clean against the background of the locals. The temperature in my apartment at home is the same as outside. I don't have glass. I covered it with tape and blankets. 
Don't have a heater? No. How do you survive? It's just horrible. Do you currently support any position or are you apolitical? What position, in general, about this war and this situation? I am Ukrainian. Here is the short answer. If the shelling is coming from the side where the enemy is coming from, it is best to hide behind such houses. Of course, if the mine falls here, nothing will help. You see how the locals generally don't care about security measures. Here is a man just riding a bicycle. Another man went there. In my opinion, this is complete madness. Why do they move like that? Several civilians been killed in the city every day. There are no exact statistics, but Tatiana told us beforehand, from 4 to 10 to 15 people can die in the city every day. These are Russian gifts. These gifts are everywhere. How do you stand under these explosions and sweep calmly? Already used to it. It's scary. The ground is humming. Yes, we are used to it. Where should we old people go? I moved my children and grandchildren out, but I'm already here. Was there a technical school across the street? It was an international institute. When it flew into it, did you have the ground here shaking? It was a shock. We thought the roof would fall on our heads. The houses are already old. Here they have restored a little and here they are just as old. My mother, may she rest in peace, is from the city of Horky, Russia. So you are partly ethnic Russian? And my father is from Bakhmut. How do you feel about Russians now? And how was the war treated? I can't understand what is happening at all. I don't understand what kind of war this is. Brother against brother, or what? After that, do you still consider them brothers? No. I understand this way, if they wish me death, then it can only be an enemy. My mother is from Russia, and if she would saw it all from the grave she would go crazy. She would never have believed that Russia could throw missiles at us. We are Ukraine. It was united, and it will stay united. I don't understand why they came here. They attacked as Hitler at 4 in the morning. And these are the same. What is a special operation? I understand when there is a fracture of an arm or a leg and a special operation is performed. And what kind of special operation they have in Russia? Name it directly, it is undeclared war. Hitler's method, people sleep, rockets fly. Hitler threw bombs, but here they throw rockets. On February 23rd, I was congratulated with the Soviet Army Day. I listened to the radio in the morning and couldn't believe my ears. I thought, I'll turn on the TV. Turn on the TV, the war. And where do you hide when a rocket falls somewhere near you? A woman lives near me, she is from the village of Lohanka. She is 72 years old and has a disability of the second group. I take care of her, I can't imagine, if I hide somewhere where will I hide this woman? She can barely walk, I don't know what to do anymore, and she does not want to evacuate. She says, I was born here, I will die here. Do you also have such an opinion? Yes, I do. Children have everything, they are provided with everything, they will not starve. Did many civilians die here on your street? A lot, I'll tell you. You don't even know who is where. I know acquaintances with whom they talked. Here is the store. Now it works, sometimes it doesn't work. And now the heating point has been opened, so good. Helps you a lot. You can charge your phone, a blanket, all what you need. Well done, well thought out. Saves well. And you can drink coffee. Good day. Did you have a shop here before the war or did you open it now? No, we have opened it now. Of course, they buy products, even though they are given humanitarian aid. They buy mostly water, dairy products, they take sausages, bread, 30 hryvnias for a loaf, 1.5 liter bottle of water, also 30 hryvnias, 6 liter bottle of water for 60 hryvnias. A boy and a girl go to Kostyantinivka and Dreshkivka. So you hardly earn something? You can say that this is a humanitarian mission. Our salary is 250 to 300 hryvnias a day. No one would agree to work for such money under such conditions. The boys also take a lot of risks, the roads are dangerous. And they bring gas to people. 
It's just a powder keg. They go with these gas canisters that people bring us. It's just scary. You are in an open space, a projectile can fly at any second. It ruined our tax office three days ago. We had a very beautiful city. We had such rose alleys and great roads in the city. Businesses were working. There was everything, a glass factory, a meat processing plant, non-ferrous metal plant. We had a very prosperous city. I have always been proud to be Ukrainian. I have no conviction that Russia will be here. I am a patriot of my city. Perhaps we are saving our city with our energy. I have confidence in this and hope that the city will still remain, people will return home and people will live. If the armed forces of Ukraine have to retreat, will you still stay? Where to go? There is no income at all. I have no money saved up. I live on this money. I explained about the amount of income. All this is very sad. All the events that are happening are a great pity. It's a pity for people, many of whom are dying. Many children here. A lot of old people. I really feel sorry for them. And there is no one to help them. You go to bed, ta-ta-ta, boom. Sometimes it explodes nearby, the house shakes. This has never been felt before. We are lying in the basement, but the basement is underground and the house is shaking. And you think that this projectile will hit you. My son-in-law's house is not brick, but panel. A mine or projectile hit it in the entrance to the upper floor it collapsed. They were sleeping on the first floor, it was 1 a.m. The entrance collapsed, so it has been lying there for two or three months, and whoever slept in the entrance, they are all still lying there, no one can get them. Despite the difficult situation that is developed in Bakhmut and despite the fact that there are daily civilian victims, the dead are buried centrally in cemeteries. There is no situation here like in Mariupol or around Haki and Izum, with people buried in gardens and yards. But the situation with homeless animals is terrible, as it is along the front line. Look what happened along the road with cold weather. We will probably blur it, but you get the point. Here lies the poor animal, which may have died from a shrapnel, and maybe from the cold, most likely from the cold. Are you looking for leftovers here or what? For a dog, we find something for the dog and for ourselves. Do you lack humanitarian aid? They give us. I am going to get humanitarian aid right now. Here is the dog, and there is still one at home. The people left, leaving the dogs behind. I have 13 cats, none of them are mine. People have left, houses are in ruins, what should they do? Do you feel sorry for them and do you feed them? Everyone does that, but everything is fine, for now, if not killed.
Walking through the empty streets of Bakhmut, you can see a large number of such ancient, still imperial buildings, which are now destroyed by the war. These ancient houses testify to the fact that Bakhmut has a long and ancient history. And at one time, until the end of the 20s and 30s, it was the regional center of the entire Donbass, this city was called Artemisk. So it was named in honor of the odious personality during the civil war in the Russian Empire, the politician Sergei. At that time it was fashionable to take a pseudonym. He took the pseudonym Artem, and the city was named after him. What was he famous for? The fact that he was the founder of the Donetsk Kryvoriska Soviet Republic. So DNR and LNR are not something new in these territories. Back in 1918, pro-Russian elements tried to create puppet states here in order to split Ukrainian statehood. Fodor Sergei Artem claimed power in the 1920s, fought for Soviet power. He was one of the top communist figures. As you know, in the 1930s Stalin cleaned everyone. He was building his personal dictatorship. They kept the name Artemisk, but moved the regional center to Yuzivka, Oleksandrivka, which at that time was renamed Stalin and then Stalino. And already after World War II, when Stalin's personality cult was debunked, the city was given the name Donetsk. In Bakhmut, the first city in Donbass in 1917, a blue-yellow flag was raised on this building on November 7, when the Central Rada signed the Third Universal. Today, we see that this historic building was destroyed by artillery fire of the Russian invaders, but the tridents on the columns were preserved. The first flag was raised in November 1917, then the Ukrainian government was established here, the Hetmanate changed. Also, the first uprising against the Hetman in Donbass, which was supported by the UNR, namely Petlura, also took place here in Bakhmut. This is how the historical fate unfolded, that later the city was captured by the whites, after them the red troops immediately came here. And this Soviet occupation of the city lasted until 1991, when the Ukrainian authorities returned here. But it is worth noting that in contrast to the western regions of Ukraine, where flags were raised as early as 1989 to 1990, the first blue-yellow flag flew over Bakhmut in February 1992. In August 1991, Ukraine became independent, but due to such inertia, red flags hung here for another six months. 31 years have passed since then, and since then the Ukrainian flag has been constantly flying over Bakhmut. Now the Russians, by throwing their most elite and most capable units here, are trying to knock us out of the city with all their efforts. According to statistics I found online, I don't know how reliable it is, only in the battle for Bakhmut, such private companies as Wagner and other mercenaries have already lost more than 10,000 soldiers killed. No one counts the wounded. Now, seeing for myself what redoubts and defense lines are being built in Donbass, I can say with confidence, if we have to surrender Bakhmut under certain strategic circumstances, our troops will will build an incredibly strong defense at the next stages. The following cities, such Kosti and Anivka or Chase of Yar, will turn into huge fortresses in which the Russians will once again place tens of thousands of their soldiers. For Bakhmut it is not the first fights in this latest Russian-Ukrainian war. In 2014, active hostilities also took place here, because one of the largest preserved bases of our equipment, from the Soviet Union, was located on the northeastern outskirts of Bakhmut. There were more than 260 units of tanks of various calibers. Then the separatist forces tried to break through and capture this military unit, or take possession of this equipment. By the way, in Bakhmut in summer 2014, for the first time, our military destroyed and captured a Russian tank. This was visible from the fire extinguishers and from the documentation. So Russia was already taking an active part in the battles. It involved its specialists who took part in these battles. And this riot was done with their equipment and weapons. And Russians still say, you shall Donbass for eight years. I go back to the one who first brought the weapon here, where it started to appear here.
park of children's attractions. Shells fly here from time to time. The city is buzzing, shells are flying everywhere. Here lies such a super large warhead that did not explode. It just fell near the bench into the tiles, threw up the ground. But Bakhmut is a lottery. It can fly here at any second, anywhere. Your karma is tested here. Here, for safety reasons, you should always be in the basement. If you walk in an open space, it's just random. Now let's see what remained from the station after Russians. By the way, it is an ancient building dating back to Tsar's times. After 2014, when a lot of foreign investments came to Bakhmut, it was restored. The facade was well made. We've never seen a railway station so abandoned, but so new and so beautiful. There are furniture and chairs here. Apparently, the tickets are lying around there. Shells flew here several times. It is relatively intact, only the windows are broken. They didn't even loot much here, because there are many soldiers in the city. The city is surrounded on all sides by checkpoints. Although the safes were all broken here. Probably, it was not a very crowded station, but the pleasant and cozy station of the Ukrainian Donbass is a terrible wasteland and rails in one and the other direction. It's evening time in Bakhmut, and as you can hear, a lull has come. Just a minute ago. It was thundering here all day. Oh, it started again. I think it's for the first time I've just heard a moment of silence. And it was the longest period of time then the city has been quiet. I talked about it, it lasted a minute and then flew away again. Some kind of recharge. We've been in the city since morning and it's been like this all the time. I just began to wonder why there was such silence. We left Bakhmut railway station and 11 months ago people could come here from Kiev by train and were greeted by such an information picture about the city of Bakhmut. Here it is a map. And now it's just like deep state. You can see and tell on the map where the hostilities are taking place. Here is the railway station, we are standing next to it. Here is the city center that we just walked around. These southern suburbs are practically all destroyed. We were there and there was heavy shelling, the shells flew near us. The Bakhmutka River is below here, and the Russians are advancing along it from Opetne. Opetne is currently occupied, there is already a grey zone here. Likewise, across the river, this entire territory on the map is a grey zone. Active shooting battles are taking place there now. Close combats. At the beginning of the war, this did not happen at all, and now, surprisingly, it is practiced here. It would seem that it should stop a little for the winter, because the intensity of hostilities always stops for the winter. But now it's like paranoia. Russians are paranoid. Perhaps there is some political motivation to take Bakhmut, see Paris and die. One might think that if Bakhmut is taken, the war will end there. In two months here, they have advanced very little, but they continue to press. They now have a change of command. Is it noticeable in their actions? Now they are trying to advance with infantry. They come in at night, in the morning in subversive groups. Then more extensive armed dozens of people come along their paths and fix themselves for as long as they can. If these are some kind of buildings, then it is more difficult to knock them out. Their stubbornness is surprising. Whatever they were, convicts or Wagnerites. Where does this insistence come from, do you think? When they are captured, they explain that they are driven here under the threat of death. I don't really trust this, because in captivity you can tell anything so that you are not touched. You will hear what you want to hear. But those who want to know some general information, can do it. In this situation, you need to be stupid enough to, on the basis of propaganda, climb head first. But they climb. If I have any explanation, I will let you know later. We were in position, sat down to have a bite to eat. A guy was sitting here on a chair, I was standing here. And the boy sat down to eat. He still had food left. 
152 arrived, we were scattered a little. But, thank God, everyone is alive, not a single scratch. Without a concussion, no concussion, we walk here under God. Well done, the head hurt a little, but that's it. Is this mine flew in? Yes, 152 caliber. If it explode, we wouldn't be alive. Oh, it didn't explode. It didn't, the top ripped off. So it didn't explode. It punched three plates. You guys are born in a shirt. Yes, we all walk under God. Then you should probably take it with you as a trophy. No, thank you. I want the war to end and I forget about it like about terrible dream. I understand. That White House, see, yeah, are they already there? Yes, the Russians have been storming Bakhmut since May. You were here. Did they stand like that in May? Here the front line has not advanced. In general, maybe for a little bit. It seems to be unshakable. Is it less than one kilometer? 1.5 kilometers. And these are orcs? Yes. And you stand there watching. Isn't it scary that something will fly in here? We are already used to it. Don't they shoot here from tanks? They shoot from everything. Do the locals still go to the private sector from time to time? Yes. If they are still sitting in the basements, I can understand. But here, it is Russian roulette every day. Yes, a little. Here are my comparisons. In 2014, I got into the ATO zone. Now I'm in the infantry. It's heaven and earth to compare. They shoot at you so that you can't raise your head. If you go there, across the river, pigs and dogs there have nothing to eat. Animals eat corpses, both pigs and dogs. A dead body lay nearby in front of our position, and there was nothing left of it, the dogs had already eaten it. Because of the bombing, we only cut and saw the wood. The ceiling fell, the toilet froze, we live like gypsies. Here, look, come here. There is no half ceiling, it is rotten. Has it blown through the roof and is leaking? Last year we raised money for slate, and now it's leaking again. I don't know what will happen when the rains come. It will be impossible to live here in April. Why don't you go to the closest basement? It's safer there. Some people went there. There are many people there. As soon as a projectile flies here, your house will collapse. The basement is too large and it needs heating. Here at least we can cook food, but where to cook in a basement? Likewise, at the stove. They don't have the stove yet. I don't know if my son will buy it or not. He brought some briquettes yesterday. We live here as gypsies. We don't know which of them is to blame Putin or our president. Come on, who's this land? And who invaded it? Zelensky. Did Zelensky invade it here? Zelensky was elected by the youth. It's time for the old people to die. And who came here in tanks? Who's shelling the city? We do not know, from all sides. Oh, trouble. What do you think about this? Me? Yes. What do you mean, about war? What's going on? What happened? God knows what happened. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't go anywhere. He just sits at home. There are two of us left here. No light, no water. We go and buy water. Yesterday, the soldiers gave us some chicken wings, some apples, a piece of pork and a loaf of bread. Why do you say you do not know who is shooting? If our military is in the city, so they're shooting themselves? I don't know who is shooting. I don't go anywhere. If ours are here, who is shooting at them? Their own or someone else? I do not know. I am from the Varanish region, from a village. Was this language spoken in the Varanish region? The city of Kalach. Yes, I'm Oklushka. 
Are there Ukrainian villages in Voronezh region? No, the hells talk like this in the villages. And use different words, the hat is called Malahai. So in your village they speak like you? Yes. In Kalach, who speaks Russian, and who speaks like me. My daughters speak like me. Do the Russians their love howls or laugh at you? No, they don't like in the Smolensk region, in the city of Vizma. His sister lives there. We went there and they hate us because we were Ukrainians. Does it make any difference to you who will be in power, Putin or Zelensky? I don't care anymore. They pay me 3,400 hryvnias as pension and they did not pay it to me in December. Neither he nor I were given a pension. How much is left to live if I'm already 75 years old? You can live up to 100. Let's see. We will see. There are no shops. I don't know what will happen. Bakhmut City Council, over which our flags fly. In 2014, pro-Russian separatists invaded here. For several days, the flag of the so-called DNR was raised here. And at that time, the mayor of the city continued to be the same person who is still the mayor of the city today. And the most paradoxical thing is that this person has been the mayor since 1990. Despite the fact that people have been dissatisfied for years, they said, it's bad in the city and it's even worse, businesses are closing, factories are being cut, but they've been electing the same person for 32 years. Years. The only phrase that speaks about this person in 2014, what is more important to you, the flag or peace in the city, he explained the separatist flag by the fact that he tried to save the city from shelling and serious hostilities. And this war, which is literally a kilometer away, across the river, where the blood of the best sons and daughters of Ukraine is being shed, is largely connected with the consciousness of our society, with the choice of such odious personalities who have been sitting as local lords for 32 years. What do you think of the mayor? A good mayor, not bad, good. Have you always voted for him? Yes. Why all the factories were cut to the metal during his rule? I don't know that yet. Don't you know you have factories gone? No, I know, but I didn't think it was him. Are you not very interested in politics? I was not into politics. Each of you must understand that after the elections are over and you have ticked one or another candidate, your interest in politics should not end. You should continue to be interested in politics, you should monitor the government, you should control the government. After all, we have a democratic country, a democratic society, where the people are the power. We must think about it and remember it. And because of this war, we have to change. If this war does not lead to changes and we remain out of politics, then this war will be permanent and eternal. And once again the blood of the best sons and daughters of our nation will be shed.
stop.